Continuing to keep you updated on the Chris Reed, Rick Joyner, and Morningstar scandal. We got new information for you. Rick Joyner consulting with, um, well, a questionable individual, somebody that we, you know, talk about and cover here on the channel quite frequently. And we're going to get to that all here in this video. Uh, but also, uh, do the stories match between Chris Reed and also Catherine, the victim in this situation who came forward and gave her story to the Roy's report a couple of days ago? This was, of course, after Chris Reed had already resigned from Morningstar Ministries, except when he resigned, none of the, you know, the allegations that Catherine came forward with were mentioned as the reason for which Chris left. In fact, as I've been covering this story, Chris cites that his reason for leaving Morningstar was because of another lawsuit that Morningstar is currently facing, but that's from a former volunteer and police officer who had allegations of inappropriate behavior that he did to you know multiple male students at Morningstar. And Chris had said at the time during his original resignation statement that he could not be and did not want to be the face of a ministry that was embroiled in this sort of a, a legal dispute and scandal with everything coming in. And Chris wanted to stand with victims. So I said, I called this out. I thought this was weird. You know, why are you saying that, you know, you stand with victims and you're trying to paint yourself as, you know, somebody who has, who is this champion for them. And yet all the while you had your own victim out there from, you know, three years ago that had her own story to tell about this. And Look, we know these things never stay hidden, you know, forever. They all eventually come up to the surface. And so Chris had to come out with a video. He put it out on his own channel and he, you know, attempted to explain things. Although I said at the time in my previous video that I think all that he did was just raise even more questions and cause people to, you know, have even more to say about the way that his discipline was handled and the quote unquote restoration that he underwent. Well, we now have some more information on that. Rick Joyner spoke with the Roy's Report, TRR, on Friday, August 30th, and he gave a little bit of an insight as to what went down in 2022 as far as, you know, what type of restoration Chris actually had and what the board had to say about it. So there's a lot to get into here. I mean, even, you know, Chris is now even talking about getting a lawyer. His wife, Missy, is responding to this as well. So there, there's a lot of issues right now at Morningstar. It almost feels as if the walls are kind of caving in here and look much very similar, actually, to what we covered back in the fall of 2023 with Mike Bickle and IHOP KC. It just seems like it's one mega ministry after another that, you know, God is exposing. He's lifting the veil on these characters. And, you know, there's unfortunately still so many that choose to be in the dark about it. They want to bury their head in the sand and they want to misquote their favorite scriptures like judge not lest you be judged or he who be without sin cast the first stone. Yeah, those are obvious scriptures in the Bible, but you are misusing those. You are twisting those to defend wolves who do the things that they do, even though the Bible clearly warns us numerous times about wolves in the last days, how they would come to deceive many. You know, it's not a situation about, oh, you, you sin, you slip up, you ask for repentance, you move on. What so many people fail to, to realize, and I always say this, is that, you know, a, a lot of these characters, a lot of these shady people, you know, they were never really truly believers to begin with. Or if they were, when they got sucked into the vortex, really, of, you know, the mega ministries, they just got too obsessed with the limelight. And they kind of forgot where they came from and it became about an agenda about pursuing their own needs, their own desires, their own fixations, right? So hopefully people will start to wake up, but look, I, I won't be surprised if they don't. We got a lot to get into. Before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always, walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking that for those that want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see, 
I made a video that explains it all, which you'll find a link to in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple of different ways you could do that. One, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You could become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. That link is in the description. And of course, you guys could also help us out with our GoFundMe. I've been sharing the story with you guys for, well, really the last month. My wife, uh, who's only 39, unfortunately suffered a stroke many weeks ago. Uh, we had two separate stints with her in the hospital. There was a, a vegetation and endocarditis buildup on her main heart valve, uh, which actually a piece of that broke off and caused the stroke in the first place. She's uh, currently right now on six weeks of antibiotics. She's going to be out of work for the foreseeable future. Um, no paychecks coming in, nothing like that. And our, our medical bills are continuing to stack up on us. Um, it's, it's been a very rough go. She had a second week in the hospital because then she had an allergic reaction to her antibiotics. Uh, and so we had to go back again. It, and then I got sick on top of that. I'm still re recovering from not feeling well myself. Uh, so uh, we've definitely had a lot going on. It has been the most challenging time of our lives health-wise. Uh, but you guys have been great with the donations. You've been keeping us going. You've been keeping us afloat. Those of you that have been donating on GoFundMe, uh, we, we read, you know, those donations that come in and it just, it's, it's changing our lives. It, it really is. It, it's really helping to sustain us in this time right now. So we ask if you can, if God puts it on your heart to do so, to keep that coming for us. Uh, or again, too, if you'd rather donate through Patreon or through uh, the YT Super Thanks, you can do that as well. Um, it's all appreciated. However, you can you can do it. It all adds up. So thank you guys again so much. We just are, are so grateful and God bless you all for your, your generosity uh, during this time. Uh, again, we are truly thankful. So let's get into this. Yeah, we got some new information now. Of course, I've been covering this story since it first came out. Um, just a little bit of a brief review. Of course, Chris Reed's resignation kind of came out of nowhere. People weren't expecting it. There was no sort of you know previous announcement about he would be stepping down maybe at the end of the year. There would be some sort of a transition period where he would you know, work on training somebody else to come up as a new president and CEO. Nothing like that at all. It was just Chris said that, you know, he was heartbroken by this decision, but he had to go. Um, and again, he cited the lawsuit that was filed against Morningstar Ministries on August 7th by multiple families that had male students that were involved with Morningstar that had inappropriate behavior and mistreatment happen to them at the hands of one of their former volunteers who was also a former Marine and a police officer. And Chris again said that, you know, he did not want to, you know, be the face of a ministry that was, you know, in, involved in this sort of a lawsuit and he wanted to stand with the victims. So he cited that as his reason for leaving. The main reason he didn't have any ill will towards anybody, not even Rick Joyner, and that he planned to, you know, he even stepped down from pastoring the Morning Star Church too. So all, all of these things, he was gone altogether, but he, you know, hopes to continue in ministry, uh, whether it be, you know, his prophetic school and, and maybe even pastoring another church one day down the road. So that was the first statement. And then, well, we heard from Catherine. Catherine gave her story to TRR, the Roy's Report, and she spoke about, and this is after TRR received an anonymous tip about an inappropriate relationship that Chris Reed had with one of the Morning Star students back in 2021. They then got Catherine's phone number. They called her. Catherine believed that it was really like a God appointment, almost that God had woke her up that morning and prepared her to take the phone call and to share her story. So she did just that. She talked about how, you know, Chris said you use prophecy. I mean, stop me if you've heard this before, right? Pastors and big ministers using prophecy to lure in women. Mike Bickle, anybody? IHOP KC? Yeah, we covered it. And, you know, he tried to say that she was special. And then they started, what do, you, what do you know, spend alone time together in either her car or Chris's van. Uh, you know, Chris gave her his phone number and said, hey, you know, I don't normally give my phone number out like this, but I feel like, you know, we have a bond, you know, but I, I want you to store my number in your phone under a different name, which, you know, why would you do that? If you, you know, of course, you're, you're worried you're going to get caught. So Catherine says that, you know, there was kissing between the two that happened and text messages that went way over the line. 
uh, as far as, you know, Chris wanting to do certain things to Kath, and if you know what I mean, and you can use your imagination here, uh, uh, the word rope was mentioned, okay? Uh, and again, you can read the full scope over at the Roy's Report if you want to, where they, they go into the full-on deal with it all. Um, so yeah, those messages were what she received. Remember, Chris was married with six kids, okay? With six kids. Catherine also said to TRR that uh, Chris got handsy with her on another occasion as well, okay? Handsy, putting his, shouldn't be putting your hands there, okay? Not good. So she talks about how eventually they had, this is back in November, December, 2021. Catherine eventually goes to uh, speak uh, in a disciplinary meeting. I guess she had, there was some talk that she had some, some, uh, uh, some addiction issues and, you know, that got brought to the attention of some of the Morning Star leaders. But during that meeting, she, this was in February of 2022, she disclosed to them that she had a relationship with Chris Reed. And even though they had said that they weren't going to tell anybody about it, she decided to do that. Now, she told them about the kissing. She told them about the inappropriate messages, even showed it to them, by the way, and even had journal entries where she was and she showed this to TRR that, you know, she was writing about how she was falling for a man that was already spoken for. She knew that it was wrong. You know, she was trying to get out of it. But it was the great Chris Reed. She even called him that. The great Chris Reed. Because, again, this is what you see. You know, you, you see, you know, women that, that fall for these ministers, right? They, they, they give them a prophetic word. And, and all of a sudden, they, they, they get the attention. And, and look, it's like they 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 like it, right? They, they, they go towards it. Now... The only part that she left out to the Morning Star leaders was the part about Chris getting handsy. Now, she also met with her and her mother, Karen. They met with Rick Joyner, who again, remember Chris was getting ready to take over as CEO and president of Morning Star at the time, right? He came there in, 20, in the summer of 2021. They told their story to Rick Joyner. Now, the, the handsy part, again, they left that part out. Now, Karen's mom, or I should say Catherine's mom, Karen, said that, you know, Kathy could really feel the power dynamic in the room at the time, and she did not feel comfortable disclosing that yet, because why? She was embarrassed, she was ashamed, right? I mean, it's not easy. You know, we talk about these, I, I cover, you know, inappropriate behavior, mistreatment in the church. I always say, if you're a victim of it, you have a home, you're welcome here on this platform, okay? It is not always easy for these victims to be able to just come out and share everything. For many, it takes them decades to come forward and do that. Chris was in a position of clergy. This is clergy mistreatment, okay? Yeah, we use different words here, obviously, for obvious reasons. You know, we got to try to keep it clean as best we can. But I know you guys can read between the lines. And, you know, she didn't disclose it at the time. She did to the Roy's report. And Chris, by the way, has, and still to this day, has denied uh, the handsy part of this whole ordeal. So... Chris responded to TRR. They, they reached out to him. And again, he, you know, he said that, you know, he, this, you know, yeah, he, there was the kissing and there was the text messages, but again, the, the handsy part, he had denied that. Now in Chris's video, this is important to know. I want to say this. He talks about how he felt that right when he got to Morningstar in the summer of 2021, and we're going to get to Rick Joyner's, uh, you know, new statement here in just a minute. So stick with me. But Chris said he felt that as soon as he got to Morningstar in the summer of 2021, he felt that he was under an attack of some kind. And it, it was one that he said that he didn't recognize, that he wasn't familiar with it, or he wasn't even alerted to it. Almost as if to say that, you know, the Holy Spirit alerts him every time that he's about to get attacked with something. But it was like almost like this unfamiliar spirit. And it was like a, now he didn't use this word, but I'm kind of likening it to like a, you know, a, a, a seduction uh or a seductress type of a spirit, right? That he, again, he was not, he, he said this and he wasn't familiar with it. He wasn't alerted to it. And of course, this is in reference to him, you know, having something for, for Catherine. Now I, I want to, before I go any further, I, I want to mention this because this is, this is so important. I saw comments on previous videos that I did about this story that absolutely made me sick. And these were people that, of course, I say it all the time, you know, they're big Chris Reed fans, Morningstar, whatever. Okay. Now they think that just because that, you know, Catherine wasn't under 18, that this is somehow not a big deal. No, I'm sorry. Just because the person is not under 18 does not mean this is still not a big deal. It is still a very big deal. Okay. Yeah. If it was under 18, sure. That would be even worse, but 
No, it doesn't matter how old they are. Doesn't matter. It's all bad, okay? It's all bad at the end of the day. And then they also like to say, oh, it was three years ago. Who cares? It's three years ago. It's in the past. <laughs> and yet it was never mentioned. It was never made public, right? Those that were getting behind Chris, that were, you know, giving to the ministry, had no idea that any of this was going on, right? Did they have a right to know? They absolutely did have a right to know. But if you're Chris Reed's wife, apparently she doesn't think that you have a right to know, but I'll get to that in a little bit as well. So back to Chris's statement here. Again, it's an unfamiliar, he, he wasn't alerted to this attack. You know, it's always like this whole Satan thing, right? I'll blame Satan, right? I get here, all of a sudden I'm under attack, right? You know, it's, it's always like, a like gotta put the blame there, right? I mean, it's not like they're responsible for their own actions. And look, I'll, I'll give Chris Reed, I'll give Chris Reed, I guess, a little bit of credit. I mean, he he, he came out and said, you know, it was, it, it's funny because he says, I have no excuses, but yet it, it kind of seemed like there was some excuses being made. He said that it was wrong. It was not becoming of a Christian. Right, he, that's right. It wasn't. But here's my question. Why did it take, why did it take Catherine coming forward and sharing this story for him to admit it? He didn't admit it on his own. Oftentimes they don't. Okay, for the people that say, well, what do you want? He apologized. Yeah, only because he got caught. Only because, would he ever have come out and said anything publicly if Catherine decided to not speak to TRR about what happened? Probably not. Probably not. Why would he, why would he want to do that? Right? And, and you know, ruin his reputation even more? You know, they're always very sorry when things get exposed, right? Robert Morris and Gateway Church, right? He was very sorry then after Cindy Clemish here did what? Gave her story to the Warp Book Watch. I've been covering the Gateway scandal all summer long. And Robert Morris, what, for two decades or even longer than that, really, said that, oh, it was an, I had an inappropriate thing with a young lady a long time ago, a young lady who ended up being 12. But again, they never really fully apologize and feel bad about anything until it's all exposed, right? Gateway pastor, Kemptel Glasgow, fired the other week after it was made known to Gateway elders that he was having inappropriate relationships of his own. But then they're sorry after they get caught. Very, very rarely do you see them and these, these ministry leaders ever come forward on their own, right? And truly repent for something. It is so rare when you actually see that take place. Now, the other thing that Chris said in his statement here in his video that he put out the other day, um, and I linked to, you can go back on my previous video. I linked his video and it's in the description. You guys can go watch it if you haven't seen it already. He apologized, and this is so weird, he apologized for the people that found out, that have had to have found out about what he did with Catherine. Almost as if like, you know, he never wanted it to come out in the first place, which is, is exactly what it was, it sounded like to me. Even his, his own wife was saying that, you know, like, oh, it is this, we thought we handled this years ago. And why is this all like, come, this thing had to come out again? Like, why is this thing coming out now? Like, you know, I mean, Chris is trying to promote his prophecy school and everything else, and then this had to come out. So Chris was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for those that have had to have found out about this. Like, what kind of an apology is that? Like, just be transparent, man. Like, when it happened, like, come out and mention it. But again, look, he was getting ready to take over as the new president and CEO of Morningstar. Chris said in his video that his uh, you know, his ascent to the top at Morningstar was put on hold for 15 months because of what happened with Catherine, right? He didn't even take the helm. I think it was March of 2023 when he became president and CEO of Morningstar. So the whole way that this apology was handled was just very strange. And, and, and while we're still on that topic of Chris, let me mention this because as I've said, he, you know, had been in communication with the Roy's report. They've been reaching, you know, out to him over the, this past week. And Chris has now told the Roy's report that he's going to be getting the advice of a lawyer 
and he wants to get a lawyer's advice as far as, you know, what the Reuters report is, is allowed or not allowed to say about him in publications and uh, interrogating him. And so, you know, now it's, you know, now it's getting, uh, it, it, it's getting a little bit heavier here uh, as it comes to this. I mean, look, it's not the first time the Reuters report have, you know, had to, you know, worry about somebody, a lawyer coming after them because, well, they, they do a good job of, of exposing this, this darkness as well. They've been committed to that. Julie's been committed to it uh, for a very long time now. They, they do great work over there and I'm, you know, happy to shout them out and, uh, and use them as a source for information as far as re reporting this goes. So, yeah, so Chris says he's going to be, you know, getting a lawyer now. Now, I don't know, he may need to get a lawyer as far as what's going on with, with Catherine. But let me get to Rick Joyner now because Rick has also been in communication with TRR. Now, I, I will say this. Like, I'll give Rick Joyner a little bit of credit. I'm not a big fan of Rick Joyner, never have been. But uh, the, the one thing that I will give him credit for is that uh, at least he has been willing to, you know, speak openly with TRR about this. You know, other ministry leaders could just, you know, completely, you know, shut them out altogether, not take any questions, not respond to anything at all. Um, and, you know, he actually has been. Oh, and let me actually, let me, one more thing on Chris really quick, I, I want to bring up because TRR did ask Chris if they think that, or if he thinks that it, a third party investigation should be done now uh, into, you know, the relationship with him and Catherine. And Chris was adamantly against this. And he said that, no, I, I don't. He goes, what good would a third party investigation do at this point? What would it do? What would it accomplish? He says, I don't see the point in it. Uh, now, I don't know if that's because there's more out there still or, and again, they never did have a third party, by the way, and I'll get to that with Rick Joyner, but there never was a third party that looked into uh, the inappropriate relationship that he had with Catherine. Uh, so he was not happy about that idea at all. And again, that's when he talked about getting a lawyer and talking to them about, you know, what TRR can and cannot report about him and, and, uh, and publish. So again, back to Joyner. Now, again, he's been talking with TRR, so I'll, I'll give him some credit for that. He's been answering questions. Now, one of the things that was mentioned as they talked to him on Friday, August 30th, was the stories about how now all of a sudden he says, now the stories are not matching up. Before he said they did match up, right? Chris Reed's story and Catherine's story, they, they matched up as far as what actually were the details of the inappropriate relationship. Now, Rick Joyner says that he was told that the only sort of a kiss that happened was a peck on the cheek and that it happened only one time, one time. But that's not what Catherine said in her story to TRR. And even Chris Reed had alluded to that the kissing was more than just a peck. Uh, but in addition to that, also the getting handsy part. So this is what Rick Joyner had to say. He goes, somebody is lying here. Okay. Somebody is lying. So it's either Chris Reed or it's Catherine. But Joyner says, I am more inclined to believe Chris Reed than I am over Catherine. And I, you can't be surprised by that statement at all, right? I mean, Rick Joyner has a history of standing by, you know, these types of creepy pastors, right? I mean, I talked about it with Mike Bickle when Joyner was like one of the biggest Bickle supporters when all those allegations came out against him back in the fall of 2023, he was waving that Bickle flag of support. He was saying that he'll have a big comeback to ministry, right? I mean, some people were even joking that Bickle should just go to Morningstar, right? I mean, it, it was just disgusting. Some of the comments that were made by Rick Joyner during that whole entire process. And I covered it on my platform at the time. So you know, this stuff of inappropriate behavior and mistreatment, again, Joyner is is, is, <laughs> is a terrible person uh, to, you know, have in your corner if you are somebody who is a victim of it, because he usually always sides with the individual that's, you know, the one that's, uh, you know, being accused of doing it. So he says he's more inclined here to believe Chris Reed. So I don't think, and no wonder Catherine, by the way, didn't feel comfortable disclosing all of the details to Rick Joyner when they had that meeting, both her and her mom, Karen, had with him uh, back in February of 2022. No wonder she didn't feel comfortable. I mean, her mom talked about it. The, you know, the power struggle, the, the, the fact that, you know, there's these big, powerful, you know, 
Morningstar leaders. And, you know, she probably didn't feel that if she disclosed everything that happened, that they were going to believe her, at least fully believe her, or even really do anything appropriate about it. So I can't blame her one bit. Now, this is Joyner's idea that he had, because... And wait till I tell you who he's who he's been talking to. But his idea now is to have both Chris Reed and Catherine conduct a polygraph test to see who's lying. Now, look, Catherine does not even live anywhere near Morningstar Ministries anymore. She moved away. She's not even in the area. And Joyner said that, you know, she may not want to do it, but I think that this is a good way for us to find out Who's actually telling the truth here and who's not? And look, this is why. <laughs> this is why there should be a third party investigation. This investigation should not be done by Rick Joyner. Okay? Somebody who is biased towards Chris Reed. He basically admitted it, saying, I'm more inclined to believe Chris, right? Now, wait till I get to some more stuff here in a little bit. But Rick Joyner, the, the whole like, theme behind his comments with TRR was that he's going to investigate it. He's going to get to the bottom of this. And when he does, he's going to put out a public statement with his findings, I guess. And so the whole polygraph thing is just, it's just weird. And by the way, this, this was not his idea. Okay. I, I've been kind of hinting at it throughout this video, but he had a conversation with one of his good friends. This was on a Thursday night. It would have been August 29th. None other than, <laughs> should I say, uh, uh, Mrs. Joni, La uh, Joni Lamb's husband? <laughs> yeah, Doug Weiss. He called up Doug, we <laughs> Doug Weiss of all people. I just did a video about Joni Lamb a few days ago. Those of you that watched it, it did pretty good on the channel talking about how she... Uh, had this vision where she actually spoke with her late husband, Marcus Lamb. Marcus even mentioned Doug in that vision. If you missed that video, go back and check it out. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of conversation about it too in the comment section. But yeah, Joyner said he called up Doug Weiss and he told him about the Chris Reed situation. And he wanted to pick his brain. And Doug Weiss gave him the idea to have both Chris and Catherine undergo a polygraph test. That's right. Doug has a, you know, his own, you know, his own counseling business. And yeah, like that's the last person I want to go to for counseling. But he uses polygraphs often, he said. And he says, this will, you know, help you to, you know, get to a resolution with this as far as whose story is right, who's, who's lying, who's not lying. And so he's a big proponent of that. Rick Joyner liked the idea and he wants to go ahead and use this now in this situation. But let's talk a little bit more about this restoration process. Cause again, this was something that Chris alluded to as well in his video that he underwent a disciplinary period and a restoration period after the allegations were first made mention. Now this is what Rick Joyner said. He took, the allegations to the board, okay, to, to, to Morningstar's board. By the way, you know, the, the board members were not, are not like made public anywhere, but Rick Joyner did disclose some of the names um, of the board to TRR. And so if you guys want to check out, and, and he's going to apparently send the rest of them to them by email, but if you want to check out some of those names, uh, go over to the Roy's report and you can look up their latest article and you can see now, Two of the names that I saw on there right off the bat were uh, eyebrow, eyebrow raising names. Wellington Boone, who is a pastor and also sits on IHOP KC's board. Big red flag to me right there. But again, if you know the history between Rick Joyner and IHOP KC, Mike Bickle, you can't be surprised that an IHOPer would be there on Morningstar's board. And then you also had Lance Walnaw who sits on Morningstar's board as well. Now, he's got his own checkered past. So, Joyner said that after he presented the allegations made by Catherine, what happened with Chris to the board, not one member, this is very important, not one member 
saw any reason why Chris could still not be the president and CEO of Morningstar despite everything that happened. Not one member, ladies and gentlemen. No one objected. No one objected. Are you surprised? Are you surprised nobody objected? Because this was a situation where this wasn't just somebody that was pastoring the, the Morningstar Church. This was somebody that was getting ready to take the helm altogether as CEO and president. But Joyner claims that Chris did undergo a restoration process. And that restoration process included weekly meetings, like counseling meetings and sessions with another board member. And when he was pressed further as far as, okay, what exactly is the protocol? What, what is the restoration process? And Joyner said, well, not every single, you know, restoration process of what we do is the same. It's all a little bit different. Oftentimes they'll, they'll study and they'll go into the word and they'll look up specific scriptures that relate to whatever it is that your sin was or whatever it is that you're dealing with. And they'll work on that over a period of time until they feel that the individual has grasped it enough to where they've overcome whatever the challenge is. So uh, again, nothing like, you know, very specific here. Uh, but the other thing that Joyner highlighted was that during this restoration period, Chris was still preaching. And he was still being trained by Rick Joyner to take over as president and CEO. So there was basically no break here. Now, even though Chris had said in his statement that he did take a, a small step back from preaching during his restoration time, but that he was still you know, very much involved with many of the other ministries at Morningstar, the way Rick Joyner made this seem is that there was no break at all for Chris Reed. He was still preaching at Morningstar Church. He was still on track, receiving all the training. The only thing they did was just delay giving him the, you know, the title for 15 months, but he was still doing ministry. So why was it? See, that's my issue. Why is he allowed to still actively participate in ministry after what he had done? Right? Well, why was that allowed? Because other pastors wouldn't be allowed to do that. They would have to, you know, take, you know, six months. They'd have to step away from the ministry altogether, but that didn't happen with Chris Reed. Now, as Rick Joyner was pressed more on this, he did admit this, that there were parts of this whole deal that he regrets and that he doesn't think were handled in the best way. He said that they felt that they did the best that they could. But, you know, this is something they said they just did their best with, but they wish they could have done it better. He didn't really say how they could have done it better. But then, this is the other big thing, he was asked about if Morningstar had conducted a third party, you know, organization to come in there and look into things at the time of this inappropriate relationship with Reed and Catherine. And Joyner said, no, he says, we don't do third party investigation. And you gotta understand this because I talk about it all the time. Churches and big ministries, they despise, okay? They despise third parties coming in there to their organizations and doing these sorts of investigations because they're worried about what they might find, right? Grace is, 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 a, is a wonderful organization, right? Boz Chivagian, great lawyer who, who really handles this sort of clergy, inappropriate behavior, mistreatment and all that. You know, there's a great organization. They do a good, a good job, right? And you know, look how many people wanted Grace to come in and do the investigation for IHOP KC. Never happened. Of course, you know, IHOP wanted their big law firms to handle everything for them because, well, they always specialize in mitigating the financial and reputational losses for the organization, not the victims. Uh, also, you can look at Gateway Church and when they hired Haynes and Boone, another big powerful law firm, which Sidney Clemish here even called out, that again, specializes in mitigating the financial and reputational losses for the big churches and not standing up for victims. So Rick Joyner said, no, we don't do third party investigations. He said, we do, however, do investigations as it comes to background checks. We work with different organ outside organizations for, you know, background checks, but not as it comes to, you know, investigating internal scandal, that sort of thing uh, with Morningstar. Uh, but I, I do think that they should. I think they absolutely uh, should bring in a third party to take a look at this because again, you're not just dealing with the Chris Reed situation. 
you're also dealing, and there's already a lawsuit here, and Joyner's not happy about it. He's saying that it's, it's, it's baseless and that, you know, because remember, you know, Morningstar is being accused here of, you know, concealing uh, this former volunteer police officer, Marine guy, you know, with the inappropriate behavior to the male students. And Rick Joyner's named in the lawsuit, Morningstar's named in it, and he's not happy about it. And even said that he's willing to go to trial to clear Morningstar's name. So again, there's, it's more than just the Chris Reed situation. You got this other lawsuit too. So it definitely should be investigated. It definitely should be looked into. But we'll see if that happens. It doesn't look like it. Again, Joyner is committed here to get, this is what he said, getting to the bottom of it. I want to find out the truth, he said. And again, he talked about the polygraph tests and maybe having both Chris and Catherine undergo those. And that'll be, again, that's, this should not be handled by Rick Joyner. It, 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 it has been proven time and time again that major mega ministries like this, they are incapable of handling these types of investigations without, in, you know, putting in their own bias and everything else like that. It just can't be done. But that's what he said he's going to do, at least for the time being. Now, I want to mention this as well. Chris's wife, Missy, kind of wrap things up on this, at least for now. So again, there's probably going to be more that comes out. So keep it tuned here. But uh, Chris's wife, Missy, she was uh, present with Chris during that video. Many of you saw that, right? And, you know, she was she was at his side there. And again, she even seemed very annoyed that this was all being brought back up again. You know, she's talking, we handled this three years ago and very, you know, defensive of her husband and everything else like that. And look, and I don't know what they have or haven't worked out between the two of them. I'm sure she was very upset when she first found out about what Chris did, right? If the two of them have been able to reconcile over what happened, then good for them, okay? Good for them. I don't wish for Chris's marriage to be ended. I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do that. It's not who I am, okay? I don't want the worst for him in any way. I don't. I just like to see genuine transparency happen here and accountability and all of that. And, and I just always wonder why it takes, you know, for a story like this to come out before them to come out and say they're really sorry about what happened, right? But getting back to Missy. Now, she also spoke to TRR. And she said that, and again, this, she's very upset, right? This, that this is all coming out. But she said that any more speculation about this in the public and these allegations, she says, now it's just going over to the, de now you're just doing the devil's work, basically. Again, Satan being brought up here, right? Now it's just the devil's work. And I, I'm sorry, maybe she's a nice lady, right? But I just, I cannot accept that because I hear this, all too often, where Satan gets brought up. It's Satan's fault. It was an attack from the enemy. It was all a plot from the enemy to bring... We heard this with IHOB KC and Mike Bickle from the very beginning. There were even pastors like Joyner and many others that were calling it this. You had Stephen Strang over at Charisma, who was talking about how, oh, is it a designed attack by the enemy, right? I mean, you can't blame him for everything right? Yeah, Satan's bad, right? We know this, of course. But again, a man can make their own decisions and their own choices, and especially those who call themselves pastor or prophet or, or whatever the case. So yeah, she said, oh, any more talk on this again? She's like, we handled this all three years ago. It's all under, the, you know, water under the bridge at this point. You know, she's again, not very happy that it's all coming out because when these sort of things happen, what do we always say? It always affects the money, right? It always affects the money. For whatever Chris Reed wants to do post Morningstar, they were like this close, right? He was going to stand with victims, right? That was the messaging behind the original resignation announcement. Stand with victims. And then Catherine's story came out and you've got to know it, it burned them. It might have burned her more than it did Chris, to be honest with you. Because for Chris's, you know, ministry, you know, prophecy school and everything else like that, and if he does want to start another church, now this is out there and it's going to affect that. And it affects the money, right? Who is going to want 
you know, to, to team up with Chris Reed and ministry down the line now. Knowing this has come out, there'll probably still be some, yes. But now, a lot of people are going to be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, this kind of smells like the Mike Bickle situation in IHOP KC, and, you know, I don't, we don't want nothing to do with Chris Reed. And I'm not even, I haven't even gotten into, like, the false prophecies and, and, and everything else as it comes to that. So, yeah, and, and, and Morningstar, too. It's going to help those that, you know, donate to them. And I don't have any problem with people who donate to ministries. I ask people for donations. But, it, it's again, it's, it's the way that they handle these things and, you know, and the way they respond to scandals like this when they break out. You know, they, they, they victim shame. Again, what Joyner said, oh, I'm going to believe Chris Reed more than I am. I'm going to believe, you know, Catherine here. And again, we wonder why Catherine didn't feel comfortable disclosing all of the information to him when they had that meeting with her and her mom. So it's definitely something that, you know, I'm going to continue to keep an eye on for you. I'll give you more follow-ups on this. Joyner again says that he's committed to finding out the truth about this. We'll see if Catherine agrees to a polygraph test. What do you guys think of that, by the way? Because I want to hear from you in the comments section. Do you think that, or, or do you think at this point that Catherine should get a lawyer? Is, is it getting to that point? It looks like Chris Reed's about to, as far as everything with TRR. Uh, but should Catherine get ready for one? Should they get representation maybe by Boz Chivagian? You know, Boz, we know, is representing Cindy Clemish here right now, you know, with everything with Robert Morris and Gateway. Um, we also know that Boz is representing uh, the main Jane Doe. Uh, who came out with her story about Mike Bickle and many others as well. Uh, he would, to me, seem like a good one maybe for her to get into contact with just because who knows where this is going to go at this point. But I, again, will maintain my point that I believe that uh, a third party should be brought in here. I do not think that Rick Joyner should be heading up his own investigation into this because no matter what statement he puts out, you have to understand that now, based off the way this has all been handled, no one's going to believe him, okay? No one's going to believe him. It's just, it's just not going to happen. You, you have to bring in a, a truly independent organization to take a look at all of this. Again, not just the Chris Reed and Catherine relationship, but again, the other lawsuit involving the former police volunteer and all of his dealings. You have to do it. If you want credibility... If you want any chance of, you know, Morningstar being, you know, restored, I guess that word restored again. Again, I do agree with a lot of you that have said Chris Reed should have never ascended to that title. I, I don't care what restoration they want to put him with, with, with that sort of a title and responsibility. He should not have been elevated to that at all. If he wanted to do something else at Morningstar, whatever, that's fine. But no, the president and CEO, I'm sorry, he crossed way too many lines. Way too many lines. You don't reward someone for that. You just don't. So those are my thoughts for the time being. I know uh, that was a lot of information for you. But again, there's a lot to discuss uh, as it comes to these uh, you know, mega churches, mega ministries. Uh, and we'll continue to keep you updated on it. Again, if you want to uh, check out that full report uh, from the Roy's Report, you can go over to their website and check it out at julieroys.com. Uh, again, great article up over there about this. They've been doing great work on this story since it came out. Um, and also, again, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute to this ministry with a donation, remember you have multiple ways to do that. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You can make a monthly contribution by joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Or again, you can help us out with our GoFundMe, my wife's recovery from the stroke that she suffered many weeks ago. Uh, again, you guys, when you when you do that GoFundMe, you guys are really helping us out with our medical bills and all of our bills in general, just with my wife being out of work for a for quite a while uh, until she can get through this antibiotic process and we get some other tests done. Uh, it's all appreciated. Again, the link is in the description. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet 
receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.